Today we're seeing the fate of Bcash FS in the Linux kernel. Linus Torvalds has made another decision in post after marking Bcash FS is externally maintained. That's about the last we've heard from Linus on this subject, saying as per many long threads, public and private. And now we get another update from Linus, and this time it's marking Bcash FS for removal from the Linux kernel. We're gonna get into why this decision was made and Linus's commit, but let's get into what's been happening with BcacheFS and Kent Overstreet, the lead maintainer, as there's been a pretty big update from Kent, and this may have been the pushover for Linus to finally remove BcacheFS. And in a very brief summary, for those of you unaware of the saga that is BcacheFS, earlier this year, during the 6.16 release cycle of the kernel, BcacheFS patches included a journal rewind feature that was submitted late and labeled as a fix, drawing Linus to take a look at it in a strong stance against the way Kent was contributing to the kernel. This all led to Linus Torvalds refusing to pull requests for 6.16, the release candidate three, stating that he was done with the ongoing friction and alluded to BcacheFS parting ways, which led into what we saw no longer maintain the mainline kernel, so patches were not getting merged and BcacheFS was essentially frozen out. This led to where we are at today with Kent posting about DKMS availability and migration general announcement. DKMS stands for Dynamic Kernel Module Support. It's a framework that makes it easier to build and install out of tree kernel modules. This of course is for distributions that wanna still host BcacheFS but can't because it's not in the mainline kernel anymore. It just makes it easier for them to package BcacheFS into their systems and then ship it out without having to do an absorbent amount of work. So let's go through what Kent had to say on his Patreon and where things stand today with BcacheFS. As of Linux 6.17 and Bcache Tools 1.31.5, BcacheFS is switching to distributing as a DKMS module. This means a normal make and make install of BcacheFS tools will also install the kernel module sources which on a system with a normally functioning DKMS package will then be built and available as any other kernel module. Generally, this will all be handled by your distribution or appropriate packaging for your distro. A lot of people have contributed to the distro packaging to make this go as smoothly as possible. A big thank you to everyone involved. The mainline version of BcacheFS is still available but no longer receiving updates. And we do have an update on this as the mainline version will not be available. And we're going to get into what Linus Torvalds said about this. Anyways, so users need to be aware of the migration and depending on distribution, many have a bit of configuration to do. But overall, the migration is expected to be fairly seamless. You can still use BcacheFS as your root file system, provided you're using init RAMFS. DKMS has been well integrated with the distribution tooling for many years. The DKMS version supports Linux 6.16 and newer, and development will continue to track pre-releases of the main kernel, so we'll have support ready in advance of each .0 release. It's important to note that in the past, having an up-to-date BcacheFS tools hasn't been particularly important. We have good compatibility mechanisms on version mismatch, so users who were previously compiling from source on, for example, Debian, will need to switch to a packaged version of BcacheFS tools to get regular updates. We should have these available for almost all major distributions. And then we talk about those major distributions. So the release cadence and the channels that you can get BcacheFS on. For now, we're providing two channels users can choose from, a nightly and a release. The nightly channel provides frequent builds for users who are willing to live a bit dangerously and want the latest and greatest to help quality assurance. You should know that how to report a bug if you run this, and you should stay up to date on what's coming down the pipeline via IRC or Reddit. When big changes are coming, I put a call for testers and gather feedback before features are released. But code only moves to nightlies after passing all automated testing, so users should not expect significant breakage. And the release channel. Latest tag release has code that has been deemed stable. There is no fixed release candidate, Bug fix releases are frequent. Bigger features take longer to make their way from nightlies to release. In the future, post-experimental. I'll be looking at adding a third channel, stable, which will lag behind the release channel by perhaps one to three months for bigger feature work and backported bug fixes. I'm asking distributions to also provide any packages 
for nightly channel in addition to release because we really need as broad of a base of testers as we can get. After having tinkerers who like to screw around and break things run the absolute latest code is how we bring people into the community. Teach them to QA and report bugs and how the system works. As we get closer to lifting the experimental label, it's important to keep doing everything we can to improve our ability to QA code. And QA needs to be automated testing, which we have well covered. As well as users in the wild doing all sorts of crazy things we developers didn't think of or plan for. So if you want to help out the project, running the nightlies is a great place to start. And then we get into distribution support. So this is a big deal as this is the survival of BcacheFS after it's being removed from the kernel. And there's really two first tier support. Kent specifically highlights that Arch Linux and NixOS are the first ones to have first tier support. These are considered the platforms in which the file system has enthusiast early adopters and is the high focus of Kent at this point. And that's why the focus here is that users shouldn't have to do anything for DKMS migration. They've been shipping and supporting BcacheFS for some time. Their BcacheFS tools have already been updated to the DKMS release. So great for people using BcacheFS on Nix or Arch. We also have Debian and Ubuntu. But before getting into where those stand, make sure to take a second and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky. Also, make sure to smash that like button on the way back up. As far as an external apt repository for BcacheFS tools and BcacheFS, there is a new automated repo on aptbcachefs.org. This provides both a stable and nightlies or nightly releases, and it is now automated, clean, and actively maintained. And a big thanks from Kent to Roman Lebedev for accomplishing this. The repos now ships with DKMS enabled packages. So when you update your kernel, the BcacheFS modules can rebuild automatically. You just need to point and set up an external apt repository at this point. The future goal with this one is to work through the Debian packaging processes and get things into Debian proper. Moving on to other distributions, including Fedora, OpenSUSE, and Slackware. Fedora has long had a well-supported BcacheFS tools packaging system, thanks to Neil Goompa, so Fedora users shouldn't continue to expect a smooth experience. OpenSUSE, though, has not been answering Kent, so the communication has broken down a little bit, and it's not clear if or when OpenSUSE users will be receiving updates. Slackware, we had a user contribute to Slack build. Unfortunately, the link got lost in my billions of Firefox tabs. So please chime in if you know we can get it documented. So basically still a work in progress. And forward thinking here, Kent hopes to lift the experimental label. As we still look to be on track to lift the experimental label at the end of the year, most of the activity until then should be hunting down and closing remaining bugs. And a call for more people to join his community. Cheers, Kent. Very good as there is a path forward and it's starting to get developed for all sorts of distributions and users who have BcacheFS currently installed in their system or wanting to try it out in the future. Well, it's a big hit for BcacheFS as we thought that there had been some chance that we'd roll with BcacheFS still existing in the mainline kernel, but just not being upgraded or updated, basically remaining frozen until things got in good order again. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Even though Kent has been seriously working on big changes, including this major rebalance engine rewrite for BcacheFS, it fixes serious checksum bugs, makes all IO policy options, including checksums, replicas, and erasure encoding, compression, enforced automatically, and brings big quality of life gains for system admins, including device evacuation, manual replicate commands, and cleaner accounting so that we have fewer bugs. Basically, this big rebalancing here is a large work in progress patch series that Kent is planning to overhaul BcacheFS with. So there's a ton of development. We're not gonna get into all of this because there's quite a bit to run through. Just understand that there are still lots of changes and work being done to BcacheFS in the background. And with that all said, let's get into what Linus Torvalds has now said about BcacheFS and its fate in the Linux kernel. But before we do, if you want to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, all available at SavvyNick.com with new flashcards. Get those today. And finally, we just received an update on September 29th, 2025, called Remove Bcache FS Core Code. This is posted and merged by Linus Torvalds himself. 
BcashFS was marked externally maintained in 6.17, but the code remained to make the transmission smoother. It's now a DKMS module, making the in-kernel code stale. So remove it to avoid any version confusion. And then Linus links to an email from Kent, which we'll check out. And this is all signed off by Linus. We can see what's happened here, including documentation being removed from the file systems, and then everything to do with the file system bcashfs node being removed. This is tens of thousands of lines of code being removed from the Linux kernel. It's a big deal and a big decision made by Linus himself as it seems to move into the direction of bcashfs really not being able to come back from this one. We'll see if they can work out their differences and if bcashfs can prove to come back into the Linux kernel on a different date, but this is a big decision and it's going to cause a lot of pain for users. Even though that we have the DKMS modules, this really signals that the mainline kernel doesn't want anything to do with the file system. Regardless of that, in what Linus cited as the reason for removing bcashfs is because of the DKMS packages being available. Here's the email that Linus cited, and I'm not going to read through this entire thing, but I'm going to give you an overview here. Basically, this was posted a few weeks ago that bcashfs is in fact leaving the kernel tree and going DKMS. And we've seen updates as we've read through already on this, as Kent and his community are trying to smooth the path for users of Arch, NixOS, Fedora, Debian, and Ubuntu, and also reiterates that the experimental label should be lifted soon. I think this all signaled to Linus that that bcashfs was doing fine outside the mainline kernel and didn't want orphaned code inside the kernel, which all makes sense, but is going to become a pain for many users. It looks like that migration is happening smoothly at this point. I don't know what this means for the future of bcashfs. Are people actually going to adopt it now that it's been dropped from the mainline kernel entirely and removed? What do you think about this decision to actually remove it completely instead of externally maintained as we thought it would be once before? Do you think that's a correct decision by Linus? How do you think Kent's been doing in this whole transition? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. You're a true fan. Make sure to subscribe below if you haven't already, and then smash that like button on the way back up for more people to see this video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.